Welcome back to the Bukla series. Today we will have a look at the model 296, the programmable spectral processor. First of all, I'd like to mention the fact that uh, this module was built by me using a SAM modular kit. Uh, Stefan did an adaptation of the 296 with only through hole uh, component. So I built this module, but it seems to, to work perfectly as expected. So let's start out with this 296 module. It is mainly a 16 band equalizer. Uh, first of all, let's uh, look at the audio inputs and outputs. So here you have the signal inputs and here the different signal outputs. You also have here individual outputs for each band and we'll look at it uh, later on. On this uh, input and on the attenuator output and the programmed output, you see that you get um, even, all and odd input or output. What does it mean? Simply that uh, if you patch to the even signal input, then your signal will go through the even bands of the equalizer. If you patch into the odd input, the signal will go through the odd bands of the equalizer. And if you patch to the all input, your signal will go through all the 16 bands of the equalizer. And it's the same for the output. If you patch to the all output, you'll get the, the output of the 16 bands. If you patch to uh, even output, you'll get the output of the even bands and odd output, the output of odd bands. But we'll, uh, we'll look at some examples later. So first of all, let's make a very uh, basic patch using a sawtooth from the 258 to the all input. And we'll have a listen to the attenuator output. It's the most simple output. So if I turn the volume up, you can't hear anything because simply these outputs um, reflect what's happening on these faders. So now I can open a few bands and we can hear uh, the result. So, as you can see, it's very simple. If I listen to the even output, then, as you can see, if I turn up odd uh, frequencies, I'm oh, sorry, we can't hear anything. And unless I turn up even outputs, and of course, now, if I listen to the odd output, I get nothing unless I turn on some odd bands. And it will be exactly the same with the uh, input. So here um, we are listening to the all output. If I patch my signal to the even input then sorry as you can see the odd frequency band are not playing because our signal doesn't go through these bands but it goes through the neighbors one the second output that is really really simple to understand is the COM filter output. So this one isn't affected by uh, the position of the faders. So let's make something. Okay. And I move this fader, these faders later on. Uh, on the COM filters, filter outputs, you get either the even uh, frequency bands or the odd frequency bands. So if I patch here, 
I'm oh, sorry. We get the even bands, and here, the odd ones. And as you can see, it is not affected by the fader's position. So very straightforward. You can, for example, just patch it to um, one to the left and one to the right, for example. Let's patch the even bends to the right and the other ones to the left. And of course, it will be even more interesting if we, if we make it moving. So I will use some uh, fluctuating random voltages from uh, the 266. Now let's look at the programmed outputs, which is uh, the more complex and um, the one that makes these modules very, very, very interesting and full of potential. So uh, the programmed output isn't affected at all by uh, the fader's position. The faders can be in any position. It will not affect what's happening uh, to these inputs. So first of all, we will take once again, our good old so wave and have a listen. For now, we don't have any sounds. That's because uh, we haven't uh, opened any uh, band of frequency. To open these bands, we have two solutions. Uh, I will start with uh, the program control, which is uh, very, very interesting. So the program control can be seen uh, as a bandpass uh, filter. So here you can choose the um, frequency of your filter. And here you can choose the width, um, the bandwidth of um, this filter from a single um, uh, frequency to if you turn it all the way up to the 16 uh, bands. So let's turn it a little bit and turn up the volume, of course. And now I will scan through the bands. Oh, sorry. And you can see as I turn up this knob, All the way up, all the bands are playing, so and um, the frequency knob has no function anymore. We'll now try to listen to it in stereo because it becomes even more interesting. So I will take even output and put it on the left and the odd output to the right. I will turn it all the way down. So I and if I choose to hear just one band at a time, you will hear that the signal goes from left to right as we turn um, the frequency knob. And as we increase, we still hear the stereo effect, but it's more subtle.
So uh, that was for for the program control. And as you can see, you have um, CV input for the width uh, of the filter. And you have also a CV input with a Natian inverter for a frequency control. It's quite self-explanatory. And now let's look at another way to um, get signal from uh, this program that we put. If you turn it all the way down so we don't have any sound coming out of the module since uh, all bands are closed here, but we can open uh, individual bands using um, this input at the bottom of the module. So for example, I can use two my two random voltages and I can choose two bands that will open And of course, I can use more inputs. So let's say from the 245. The last audio output we, we didn't have a look at are um, the single band uh, outputs. So it's quite simple. You, you, you take a single band and then whatever um, the position of the fader is, you'll get uh, this, uh, this band. So it's just as simple as that. I get 800 hertz, 2 kilohertz, 500. Quite simple. Now we will uh, dive deeper into the module and have a look at uh, the envelope follower outputs right here. So to demonstrate how these outputs work, um, I will get um, royalty-free music through the modules. And uh, we'll try to, to see what happens to um, the envelope followers. So to demonstrate that, I will take my good old sawtooth uh, that, uh, that will go through a Lopez gate that I will open using uh, bands from um, the 296 envelope follower and you will see what happens. So. Okay, so here's um, the music. I have, sorry, to patch this to hear what's happening. And if I take a band output,
Okay, so you can hear that it um, analy analyzes what's, what's happening uh, into each frequency band and we get uh, um, an envelope follower based on what's happening. So you can uh, almost uh, remix uh, a song uh, using this, uh, this uh, module. The last uh, function uh, we can uh, see uh, using um, the 296 is uh, here and this uh, this part so um, just for you to understand what's happening here um, we'll have a listen to um, to the output before we, we go into detail on this part so um, let's start the music again so here if I open fully the why is it in the end that because here my so um if I uh, here I've opened uh, I've opened the the filter and um these knobs I used As you can see, these knobs are used to emphasize on trebles. Which can be useful for uh, the last function we will see now. These two switches uh, enable uh, an internal patching. So if I switch up one of these two knobs, it will patch each envelope follower output from an even uh, band or an odd band to a neighbor band. So uh, if we want to see what's happening, well, switching these knobs is exactly the same as doing this. I don't have enough um, <laughs> orange cables, but you, you see uh, what's happening and if I switch the other way I'm not sure which way it is but uh, the idea is there you will do uh, like this okay and so on uh, on the other bands so what does it allow? it allows for um, the famous vocoder patch of uh, the 296 that I will demonstrate 2 plus 2 is 4 minus 1 that's 3 quick maths Everyday man's on the block. I ain't playing when I wanna be tough, nigga. I ain't playing when I wanna be tough. This is how we do. We need to move the leg to fool while we up in the curb. This is how we do. This is how we do.
I think that's all for uh, the basic functions of the 296. I highly recommend uh, you to see uh, the Todd Barton uh, YouTube page with a lot of uh, patches using the 296 and uh, also the last uh, episode of the Source of Uncertainty uh, podcast uh, was about uh, the 296 also with a great, great uh, feedback patch. That's all for today and see you next time. Oh, my God.